I love films based on mythology or folklore. It's one of my favorite film genres, if you can call that a genre. Films based on Irish mythology specifically certainly aren't the least represented in this genre, thanks to an often misrepresented and oversimplified creature called a leprechaun. What the hell are you? I'm a leprechaun, me dear. However, compared to, say, films based on Norse mythology, Ireland doesn't have the most represented mythology on film either. That's why in this video, I will list five films based on or including Irish mythology or folklore that you should check out. I won't include fantasy films that include references to Irish mythology among a number of other cultures like, for example, Lord of the Rings, and instead will list films that focus mainly on Irish mythology or which include a significant amount of references to it. Also, I would be surprised if I didn't butcher some Irish pronunciation in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. Coming to us from a long lost culture. Lost? Not at all. The first entry on this list is a bit of a cheat according to my own rules, but because honestly there are very few good films in this very specific category, I had to include it. The 2008 film Hellboy 2 The Golden Army does include references to mythology from around the world, not only Ireland, and the Irish mythology it does cover is altered almost beyond recognition, however I wanted to include it because it is a very fun watch and does include one of the few depictions of the Tua de Danon or Old Irish Gods on film. The series American Gods depicted them last season, but before that, Hellboy 2 The Golden Army was, oddly, one of the very few films that acknowledged these very important figures in Irish mythology. Hellboy 2 picks back up with Hellboy, aka the apocalyptic demon, Anung Unrama, as he and the other members of the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense fight supernatural threats. This time, the threat comes from Prince Nuada, a powerful elf who has rejected his clan and his father's ancient truce with man, and now intends to exact his revenge on the human race for their insatiable greed. Nuada seeks all the pieces of the crown of Bethmora so that he may command the indestructible and unstoppable Golden Army, but his own sister, Nuala, escapes him with the final crown piece. Nuala finds her way to the Bureau, however her magical connection to her brother means he is not far behind. Hellboy, Abe Sapien, and Hellboy's squeeze, Liz Sherman, will have to face this powerful elf or face his golden army and the end of all humanity. I challenge Prince Nuwana. In Irish mythology, Nuwada Silverarm is the first king of the Tuatha Danann, not an elf. However, the Tuatha Danann are thought to have retreated to the mounds, or the Celtic Otherworld, after their defeat by the ancestors of the Irish people, the Milesians, eventually becoming the fairies and elves of folklore. And likewise, the elves of this film have exiled themselves underground. Unlike in this film, Nuala of mythology is not Nuada's sister. Nuala is likely based on Finula, an unrelated member of the Tuatha Danann, and Nuala Nuwada's father is not Balor like in this film. In mythology, Balor is the king of the Fomorians, or giants. So while watching Hellboy 2, you have to take its references to Irish mythology with a grain of salt. As usual with Guillermo del Toro films, the visual design of the elves and everything else is very cool, albeit not completely accurate to mythology. Overall, this is a fun action fantasy film with a bit of Irish flavor. They say the east is our future and the west is our past. The islands to the west of us, Hugh. That's Roan Inishgard, Island of the Seals. The 1994 film, The Secret of Rowan Inish, is perhaps the most overlooked film on this list, but it is a true hidden gem of this genre. The film is set in Ireland in the late 1940s and follows the young Fiona, who is sent to live with her grandparents near the sea. Fiona's grandfather Hugh tells her tales of their generational home, a small island named Rowan Inish, or Seal Island in English, that the family was forced to leave after a wartime evacuation. Through the stories of her grandfather and other residents of the town, Fiona learns of her rebellious ancestor who was carried to the island on the back of a seal, and another ancestor who married a seal, or rather a selkie, after he caught her in human form and stole her coat. While visiting this island, Fiona catches a glimpse of her younger brother, Jamie, who was stolen from the family three years earlier by the sea and the seals. But she can never get close to Jamie before he flees back to the sea. When Fiona tries to tell her grandparents about this, they are unsurprisingly skeptical. However, somehow, Fiona knows that the key to her brother's return and the secrets of her family's history lie somewhere on the mysterious island of seals. Jimmy! 
As I'm sure you guessed, this film delves into folklore regarding the selkie, or seal that shapeshifts into human form, usually the form of a woman. But the film is not so much about selkies as it is about folklore in general and storytelling. The narrative makes ample use of frame stories, or stories within stories, and these are usually tall tales told by characters throughout. Despite being written and directed by an Irish-American, John Sayles, this film also feels very authentically Irish. It captures the magic and mystery that we likely all feel when hearing folklore regarding our own family history, and it is a great pick for St. Patrick's Day or anyone interested in Irish folklore. Ashley, and this is my forest. The 2009 animated film The Secret of Kells is the first animated feature by writer-director Tom Moore, as well as co-director Nora Toomey. As I mentioned, there are very few films that really delve into Irish mythology or folklore, but one of the strongest voices in this category is Tom Moore. The Secret of Kells tells the story of the creation of the Book of Kells, a true illuminated manuscript created in the 9th century by Irish monks. Set in the Abbey of Kells, the story follows a young monk named Brendan. Brendan's uncle, Abbot Kellach, spends all of his energy building a wall to prevent an impending Viking invasion, and forbids Brendan to venture outside the walls of the Abbey. When Brother Aidan arrives at Kells from Iona with his legendary manuscript, Brendan is inspired by the beauty and power of the book to seek his passion. Aidan eventually convinces Brendan he has what it takes to complete the manuscript, but he cannot do so without inspiration. Defying his uncle's wishes, Brendan finds this outside the walls of the Abbey, where he meets his muse, the shape-shifting fairy, Ashling. However, the imminent Viking invasion may see the end of not only the manuscript, but the Abbey of Kells itself and all of its residents. <laughs> Although this story is very loosely based on history, it is also steeped in legend and folklore. Ashling is a fairy, but in some characteristics, she resembles a shape-shifting puka. These creatures of Celtic folklore are known to take human form or the form of a dog, among other animals, and thought to have either black or white hair. The dark creature of the forest that Brendan must eventually confront is Crom Cruach, supposedly a pre-Christian deity of Ireland who was satiated through human sacrifice. That is until St. Patrick himself put an end to the creature in folklore. Aside from its mythological elements, The Secret of Kells is a joy to watch for its characters and its beautiful, minimalist visual style, something I believe Tom Moore improved upon for his follow-up film and the next film on this list. This is an ancient shell that my mother gave me a long time ago. Hold it to your ear and listen carefully. You will hear the song of the sea. The 2014 animated film Song of the Sea is Tom Moore's second film, and like The Secret of Kells, weaves Irish mythology and folklore into its story. A young boy named Ben lives in a lighthouse with his father, Connor, the lighthouse keeper, and little sister, Saoirse. Ben blames his sister for the loss of his mother, who vanished mysteriously on the night his sister was born, and to add more strain on their relationship, the now six-year-old Saoirse has not spoken since her birth. One night, Saoirse is drawn to wear a mysterious white coat that her father has locked away and submerge herself in the ocean where she swims among the seals and in fact becomes one of them. Saoirse is of course a selkie, like her mother before her. When Saoirse's grandmother discovers her washed ashore, she forces both Saoirse and Ben to leave the lighthouse and live with her in a nearby city. Ben and Saoirse make an escape from their granny's home, determined to return to the lighthouse. However, Ben soon discovers that Saoirse is in mortal danger. If Saoirse is not reunited with her seal coat soon, she may die. What's more, if Saoirse is unable to find her coat and sing her selkie song, the fairies and the giant, Mac Lear, will remain stone forever, unable to reverse the spell of the evil witch called Maka. That's all I do, Beb. I take away the pain. Again, this film delves into selkie lore, which seems to be one of the more popular subjects of Irish mythological films, despite selkies originating in Scotland. However, it also includes a Celtic giant, Mac Lear, whose name is taken from Mananan Mac Lear, a god and warrior king of the Tuatha de Danann associated with the sea. Then there are the fairies, or Dina Shi. We prefer to call ourselves the other crowd, the good name, the Dina Shi. This is one of the rare examples of their Irish name being said on film. The owl-like witch Maka takes her name from an Irish goddess of sovereignty, also believed to be one of the three sisters that make up the Morrigan. The Morrigan control the fate of battles and are thought to appear as a crow on the battlefield. Like this film's Maka, although rather she appears as an owl, which is actually more like the winter hag of Celtic mythology, the Kailiach. 
Like The Secret of Kells, Song of the Sea again uses visually stunning, minimalist animation to illustrate a character-driven story with a lot of heart and a beautiful message. Tom Moore, if you're watching, you have a lot of fans waiting for your next film. Three wishes I grant you, great wishes are small, but you wish a fourth one and you lose them all! <laughs> The 1959 film Darby O'Gill and the Little People is an often overlooked gem of the Disney catalog. This film loosely adapts the Darby O'Gill books by Hermione Templeton Cavanaugh, which in turn adapt Irish mythology and folklore. Set in the small Irish town of Rathcullen around the turn of the 20th century, the story follows an aging caretaker and storyteller named Darby O'Gill. For years, Darby has served Lord Fitzpatrick and looked after his lands. However, as this story begins, he seems more interested in telling leprechaun tales down at the local pub than doing his work. When Lord Fitzpatrick decides to replace Darby with a younger man who happens to be James Bond, aka Michael McBride, Darby convinces Michael to keep his beautiful daughter Katie in the dark about his forced retirement and their impending move-out date. In an attempt to help Darby, the king of the leprechauns, Brian of Nochnashiga, decides to bait and trap Darby in the fairy mountain in order to shield him from his troubles in the outside world. But Darby proves to be too knowledgeable an adversary for King Brian. Darby cunningly escapes the fairy mountain and even manages to trap Brian the following night by getting him smashed on Pochin, eventually extorting three wishes from the Leprechaun King. The question is how to spend those wishes. All Darby truly cares about is his daughter Katie, and all Katie needs now is a fine strong lad with tempered ways. He's a fine strong lad with tempered ways. You might think that Disney, and especially Disney in the late 50s, would butcher Irish folklore, but this film is actually quite respectful of it. Most of the leprechauns are fairly accurate to their traditional depictions in folklore. Not to mention, this film also depicts the ghostly harbinger of death in Irish folklore, the Banshee, and even includes the detail that she combs her hair. Over 60 years later, Darby O'Gill and the Little People is still one of the best depictions of Irish folklore on film. However, the film's real selling point is the performances of its actors. Albert Sharp as Darby, Janet Monroe as Katie, Jimmy O'D as King Brian, and obviously Sean Connery are all great and so much fun to watch in this film. This film has a ton of heart and I would definitely recommend it as a must watch for St. Patrick's Day, as it actually is for my family. If you've been looking for some films that delve into Irish mythology this March, I hope you are inspired to watch at least one of the films on this list. I would love to know what films you enjoy in this category that weren't included in this video. Please let me know this and what you thought of the films on this list in the comments below. Also, let me know if I should do a more in-depth mythology breakdown of any of the films on this list. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more videos that delve into mythology or folklore. Check out these other videos, and thanks for watching. Happy St. Patrick's Day.